going to talk about a little bit of a, a residential school survivor, myself, my wife. And it's 10 months to be in school, in residential school, two months to be home on your holidays. But I tweeted this day, I don't know who's run running my life then because when we come home our parents are gone and we seem to me we're not allowed to come and get out with the children at the church here so we made sure we got off in town and we're separated myself and my brother we got separated Everyone else of my sister and brothers get separated. It carried on and carried on. It seemed like I lost who I was. One day, all of a sudden, here's riders coming through close by where we live. And that was Indian people. I could say about seven, nine riders hollering, singing, laughing. <coughs> and really got me thinking, hey, I know those riders. I know who they are. When I was a smaller kid, I remember them. So when they passed by, we had a neighbor, Swedish people, lived in an old house next to us, and they had three little boys. They're blonde with speckled face. And they'd say, hey, let's play cowboys and Indians. Oh, okay. We, they'd run into the chicken house, get some feathers from the old chickens, put it on their head. We're going to be the Indians. And us poor little Indians would turn out to be cowboys. <laughs> and we'd chase one another around the house, hooping it up. And I remember that very well. And then it come down to myself that, hey, I'm, I'm an Indian. Because I look at my skin and I'm from the school. Everybody in school was Indian. So I'm the Indian. How come I'm wearing a little cowboy hat chasing around these feathered little white kids? So anyhow, that's part of the life. I sure missed coming to the res, and somehow we couldn't. Through that, the imagination I had, I wanted to be a cowboy. Gee, how I craved to be a cowboy. Finally, we, my old uncle found us. My old uncle did the first roadblock I've ever known. Because when the big truck was coming before it reached Summerland, we come over the top of a little hill. Here's a wagon. Old team blocking the road. And this man, the staff, our driver, he's the staff like the boss. He said, you have to move over. No, no. He said, I want two boys. He named them. At first, the uh, driver, he was hesitant. I don't think they're on here. I want two boys. Then, you know, he peeked like that. There's one of them. So I g climbed up and I jumped. And the driver said, you can jump. You're hidden the Penticton. I ran, I jumped on the wagon, I recognized them. They're my kawa. And my other brother jumped off, we got on, I turned the wagon and went clip clop, clip clop down the paved road. And this truck came down. That's how I got connection with my own people. And he can't hardly speak English. He's a 
genuine grassroots traditional person, medicine man. And I used to ride these horses, but they're skinny and old. They're about 20, 30 years old. And I kept telling them, I want a young horse. I want a young horse. Finally, I got to live with her mom up single, uh, Sheep Creek. And his husband, Julie, he's quite a cowboy. Teach us more about riding. Finally, he told me, you're always riding an old horse. You want a young horse? Oh, sir, sir. She gave me a little three-year-old. But you break it yourself, which I did. See, I was so proud, but he was an ugly old jughead horse. Big head, big feet, hairy legs. But to me, I thought I had a thoroughbred horse, the best in the world. It couldn't run to save its life, but I thought I had something.